there's uh, in recent years the notion of 2450 that is 20 selling books self-published can bring the self-published author circa 50,000 a year good living uh two years ago i gave what's probably my final uh, talk about writing and i came across my notes a few days ago and um, decided to share the uh, <coughs> key for fiction series is outlining having an outline. John D. MacDonald wrote one Travis McGee series novel a year for 20 years. He outlined MacDonald was a World War II Army intelligence colonel and a Harvard MBA. <clears throat> Attorney Earl Stanley Gardner wrote 2.3 Perry Mason novels for 35 years. He wrote 80 novels, published, and he outlined them. Uh, attorney, practiced law, spoke Chinese, had many Chinese clients. Uh, started writing as an aside, then it became his main work. Horatio Alger uh, wrote three boy or girl success novels a year for 30 years. He outlined, or rather with all Pulp Fiction, he wrote from an outline. Nora Roberts, also known as J.D. Robb, has written, as far as my research took me, like I said, I gave this talk two years ago, about four novels a year for 40 years. Almost all of her writing is formula romance. She writes from an established pattern in an established market. Lester Dent, who was published under the name Kenneth Robeson, wrote 10 Doc Savage novels a year for 16 years. He wrote from an outline he co-created with the editor-in-chief, series editor, and business manager, Street and Smith Publications. Walter B. Gibson, who was published under the name Maxwell Grant, also worked for Street and Smith Publications, had the same team as Lester Dent, wrote 20 shadow novels a year for 14 years. That's 1.5 million published words per year. <clears throat> he wrote from an outline he co-created with the editor-in-chief, series editor, and business manager. From 1931 to 1945, Walter B. Gibson wrote shadow novels for Street and Smith Publications. These were full novels, 75,000 words each, although shorter during uh, World War II due to paper shortages. Uh, he served after his third year of college, where he earned a, eventually a B.A. degree. Uh, uh, he dropped out of college, served for a year in the Army, uh, was a private. And uh, when he graduated college, he worked at a carnival, traveling carnival for a year. Then as a newspaper reporter, or newspaper, well, it was initially reporter, became a columnist, then a magazine editor, then writer of The Shadow. Uh, how is it possible that Dent and Gibson and these other series novelists can write so much so fast, especially in comparison to the other writers, like me, I'm much slower. Uh, they have a formula, a procedure. There were four people involved in producing Doc Savage and the Shadow Novels. The writer wrote from an outline, an established story grid that had been approved by the publisher's team of business manager, editor-in-chief, and story editor. The basic story is always the same. The names of the bad guys and the victims change. 
Uh, Walter B. Gibson, Maxwell Grant, wrote 283 shadow novels in 14 years. First, the Street and Smith publisher, business manager, had input. The, uh, he focused on the business numbers. One example, Street and Smith had bought cover art of a scene in Chinatown. The business manager told the writer, Gibson, to put a scene in Chinatown. Gibson had already written that scene, but he rewrote it so that it was in Chinatown. Another example, when the uh, business manager determined that sales were underperforming, in Philadelphia, he told Gibson to write one where a key setting was in Philadelphia, and that's what Gibson would do. <clears throat> Sorry. Second and third, the editor-in-chief, Henry Ralston, and the editor assigned to the shadow, John Nanovic, who was also assigned as Doc, to Doc Savage, uh, worked with Gibson to create the repeat characters, traits, tags, tropes, story patterns, obligatory scenes. Plus, they handled all the copy editing, what used to be called the English teacher stuff. Gibson just had to write a single draft, and they would fix any writing problems. Gibson, the writer, um, they would not risk the, the publisher, Street and Smith, a profitable franchise on only a single writer. They had several other writers <coughs> wrote, write shadow novels. Lester Dant, Bruce Elliott, and Theodore Tinsley each wrote shadow novels that were published. In total, they wrote about 50 shadow novels. Gibson would uh, create a story idea, write an outline of just a few pages, then provide it to Ralston and Nanovit. They would make notes and share it with the business manager. Then uh, they would all get back to Gibson Gibson would then make a complete outline of the story. Now, I just reread uh, my original sources to make sure <clears throat> the complete outline might be as much as 5,000 words. Uh, they would be reviewed by the business manager, editor-in-chief, and shadow editor. Whatever they approve, that's what Gibson would write. He wouldn't argue with them. He'd just write it. So there was a full week of outlining. Creating the outline involved the four persons I mentioned in a cycle so that each had provided feedback. Then Gibson would write the novel in one week, roughly 10,000 words per day. Gibson said he just looked over his outline and typed on a Corona brand manual typewriter. Gibson stopped at around 10,000 words per day, because any more than that, his fingers hurt so much he couldn't type at all. Gibson would turn the manuscript into Nanovic. <clears throat> Editor Nanovic would make uh, any needed changes, then it would go to Ralston and the business manager, then to print. One week creating the outline, one week writing complete draft. Editors would fix as needed. Walter B. Gibson had been a magazine editor making $80 a month during the Great Depression. Near the end of 1930, he was asked if he would write 
the shadow, which until then had been only on the radio. <clears throat> Bookstore managers and newsstand vendors had reported that each day people came in asking for that shadow book or that shadow magazine. Street and Smith decided to try it and they, they wanted to copyright the term the shadow and they at that time the rules were you had to have a physical in print uh, version to trademark it. Originally they only promised Gibson one novel for four hundred dollars but they liked his first one so much they asked him for two more. Uh, those three published as Pulp Fiction uh, and hardback books, so soft cover and hardcover, sold out. First one was published in April 1931, and they sold out a second printing and a third, 300,000 copies. So they asked Gibson to write for them full time for $500 per novel. Now, this is during the Depression. Remember, he was making a living and supporting a family on $80 a month. <clears throat> he quit his editor's job and wrote The Shadow full time. So when they worked out this process for speed, uh, Gibson's pay increased to $600 per novel, then up to $750 per novel. Lester Dent, writing Doc Savage, was paid the same. My sources on this include the 2012 video, uh, The Shadow Knows. It's a documentary, which includes audio of Gibson describing this process. And the 2011 book by Thomas J. Shimwell, Shim, Shimeld. Walter B. Gibson and the Shadow. <clears throat> that includes uh, printed excerpts from interview with Gibson and others about, uh, you know, describing this process. Now, yeah, I also mentioned in the talk Earl Stanley Gardner. He had four secretaries. He would try out story ideas. If any of the secretaries figured out the murderer too quickly or didn't like the story, <clears throat> he'd either revise it or discard it entirely and create another. Uh, so that was the end of my talk. I answered questions. Personally, I have no problems with paint-by-numbers storytelling, commercial if it's profitable. And again, it's uh, probably the final talk I'll give. Now, there was, uh, this is the book I referenced, Walter B. Gibson and the Shadow by Thomas J. Schimmeld, forward by Dr. Robert W. Gibson, uh, Walter B. Gibson's son. Um, I bought this DVD, The Shadow Knows, Thrilling History of the Pulp Radio Superstar. It's also on, you know, on the radio for a long time. I think the radio show lasted until 1952, which was longer than the Shadow Magazine. <clears throat> now... This uh, method and variations may work for a fiction series 20 for 50. I no longer have the energy to do it, uh, and I don't have a team. My cousin and I have a cousin who's also published uh, author. Uh, we do, we have some books we're working on. And uh, we'll, I'll discuss this with him. Maybe we'll come up with something. It won't be the shadow. The shadow doesn't have a market today. 
but uh, perhaps we can identify something worth trying that's along this same line. Uh, I don't have any problem with, uh, you know, I mean, these are successful authors. I guess some snooty folks don't care for John D. MacDonald, Earl Stanley Gardner, Horatio Alger, Nora Roberts, Lester Dent, Walter B. Gibson. Uh, they wrote fast. Most of these, you know, I don't know the education of all. Now, MacDonald had a undergraduate degree and an Harvard MBA. Gardner was an attorney, although he did not finish law school. <clears throat> Under the uh, rules of the time, he could apprentice to a lawyer and finish and get licensed. Um, Nora Roberts, uh, I don't know. I think she had uh, college. Lester Dent uh, did attend college, but it was a technical degree. Um, it was a telegrapher, Morse code. Uh, and Walter B. Gibson, his uh, B.A. was in the classics, Latin and Greek. His uncle at the university where he was educated uh, taught Greek. <clears throat> so uh, that's the formula or a formula that worked. And that can be adapted, I believe, to today's writers.